What's up YouTube, Little Candy Gamer here, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to blend smoothly with Prismacolor pencils. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. I bring out a new video every Wednesday if you're in Australia, or Tuesday if you're in the US. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy my content because it really just helps me out and helps my videos rank higher on YouTube so that more people can see them. I've talked to you guys a little bit about blending before, however, I have leveled up in skill now, so now I'm going to give you an updated tutorial on blending and making galaxy art as well. So the first part will be about blending your standard colours and there will be more about how to blend a galaxy at the end. I had watched a billion YouTube tutorials on this and it never really clicked. Something was not quite right. I couldn't I could watch another artist doing it and not really understand what they were doing. So hopefully I'm able to explain this in a way that some of you can understand and apply to your own work as well. In the picture I'm drawing here in the background, it's a rainbow Eevee and I think this is the most colours that I've ever used within a single piece. And it did not take a short amount of time. I had to get about 7 hours of footage down into a 15 minute video for you guys and that's how fast I've gotten from doing these every single day for nearly a year now. In this video I'm going to explain some techniques and tricks that really helped me to do it, but in saying that, if you don't have the experience, don't get discouraged if you go and try right away and you're not able to achieve this effect right away. So for all of the techniques I'm going to explain today, you'll need some good paper with a nice tooth for handling Prismacolor pencils. The paper that I personally use is Strathmore Tone 10, which is a very popular paper for this type of pencil that a lot of artists will use. So there are different methods for blending pencils. No way is the correct way and no way is the wrong way. I'm always going to be a big advocate for there's no wrong way to do your art. So keep that in mind when I explain to you the different methods that can be used for blending pencils just because I don't personally use them does not mean that it's wrong. So some people like to use solvent when blending their coloured pencils together and it can work quite well. Uh, personally I prefer not to, that's just a personal choice because the colour is much more vibrant when I don't use the solvent. Solvent tends to spread out the pigment so what you're doing is you're watering down the coloured pencils a bit like, um, think of like a watercolour I guess, but a little bit stronger than that. The overall piece in my opinion is not as vibrant because you're not layering up the colours and I can personally tell just because it's like, it's a lot thicker to the trained eye. Um, some artists will also use markers as a base for when they colour over them so that the vibrant colour shines through from underneath and that's fine as well. They might want to use Copic markers. I find that they bleed through the paper as well. Personally I don't like that. As I said that's a personal preference though, like I'm not going to shame anybody's medium here or tell them that they're doing things the wrong way, okay? So it's fine if you like this technique, it's just not the effect that I like to go for in my designs. I've used solvent in the past and as I mentioned a really good one in my past videos, it's called Zested Pencil Blend. Um, personally I liked that one when I did use the solvent, it's a little bit more expensive around $20 a bottle but that bottle will last forever. <laughs> it's well worth it if your technique is to use solvent um, and I don't recommend that you start out learning the solvent technique though because it's a little bit of a shortcut. And I'm not saying that to offend anybody, but it, and it's worth learning that technique. Um, but it's worth learning the technique that I'm teaching this video as well, um, because it will make you better all around at all of the techniques as well. So another way with blending colored pencil is blending colored pencil with colored pencil <laughs> using the burnishing technique. The burnishing technique destroys the tooth of the paper and makes it really hard to blend smoothly. That was the one thing that I found. When you burnish you're effectively pressing very hard to smoosh the layers of colour together. You can use any colour over any colour, however the most common way to burnish is to go from dark colours to light colours. When you burnish and blend the colours together be careful to match your 
pressure with the sharpness of your pencil, the sharper your pencil is, the lighter pressure you will have to apply. So if you press harder, you're more likely to snap the tip of your pencil, which I've done a few times, more than a few times, and it leaves a mark on your paper sometimes. Sometimes a little line. I get that when I outline sometimes because I burnish to outline. If you want to burnish, it's always best to use a blunt pencil so that you don't break the tip. This might seem uh, very obvious, like this, this is another very obvious thing, but uh, the obvious thing that often gets overlooked the most, uh, one of the only three blending methods you'll ever need for colored pencil is your colored pencils. And this is the technique that I'm teaching you mainly about today. If it's really hard for you to blend them, I would recommend using fewer colors uh, or colors in the same hue range so that your mistakes are less noticeable. Don't go for blending rainbow colors together right away like I have in this piece. In saying that, it's going to be hard for a little while until something just clicks in your brain and suddenly one day, one drawing, one day it'll make sense. A big mistake that I see beginners doing a lot is not using enough values in a piece, not going dark or light enough, and their piece will end up looking flat when they don't want it to. This is fine for some style of art, some styles of art, but if you want some dimension, you're going to need to use a wide value range of colors. Using lighter layers is the key. You need to build them up gradually. You never ever want to press any harder on your pencil. You're just going to be pressing very, very lightly, just like brushing it over the top of the paper. So another thing that I found is wiping away the excess wax can help. You can use a cloth for this. I use a paper towel in this video and in general, it just helps to wipe away the excess wax that uh, is caused by wax bloom from the wax pencils. The other thing that I've found to help is brushing away the flakes of pencil uh, that will inevitably come off your pencils as you draw. I just use an old makeup brush for this. You don't need to buy any fancy equipment for that. And just, yeah, really building up those layers very, very slowly. If you're beginning, never push hard for the entire process. That's something that I found really helps me with my process. And another thing that I found that really helps me with my process is to map out the colors I'm using basically digitally as a rough guide. It doesn't need to be exact, it's literally just a guide so that you can know where to lay the colors down before you commit them to using colored pencil because colored pencil cannot be erased. This isn't a necessary step in your process and it can take a lot longer. Like up to a few hours longer. It's just a tip that I have for you, especially if you're new to figuring out light sources and things like that. Even if you're not, it can be really helpful to have something to guide you through the process so that you're not just throwing down colored pencil and hoping that you're putting it in the right place without really knowing. Um, for me personally, it helps me to have something physical in front of me, even if I'm copying off my own work, which I did. The beauty about creating digital art is that it can be changed very easily. You can change hues, you can change where you've painted in a light source or a shadow a lot more easily than you can if you colour it in coloured pencil. So it's not a necessity and you don't, if you don't have access to any means to make digital art, don't worry, it's not a necessity. Personally, I found that when I plan out my pieces this way, they turn out much better than if I don't. Who knew that the art teachers at the school actually knew what they were on about in that regard? Don't get me started on that. That's a whole other video. Oh, it literally is. This is a moment of epiphany for me. I'll, I'll definitely do a video on that later on. Um, art teachers. <laughs> Another thing that's worth mentioning, but I don't personally do, is a is using a blender pencil, as in like a um, colorless blender. As with the solvent, personally, I find it dilutes the color, and it's not really necessary in the process. But you know, if if it's something that you'd like to try, go ahead and try it. 
If you don't have a colorless blender, you can use a lighter pencil in the same shade. So for me, if I'm using like a shade of pink, I'll use deco pink or blue. I might use cloud blue, green, I might use pale sage. I think this is actually a better method and will produce more vibrant results than using a colorless blender. So when you're using a colorless blender or a light pencil, you're not burnishing or expecting that colored pencil to do all the work for you. You're still using light layers and building them up gradually and adding more of the color underneath as well. This is an advanced technique and I don't really recommend that if you're beginning that you use that at all. I had a lot of failed pieces this way. It's nice to just test it out on a, like, a little square on a little color swatch rather than committing it to a whole piece um, and realizing that you're having trouble doing it. I'm literally just going to reiterate what I said about the light layers. To blend correctly, you're using very, very, very light layers, holding the pencil very far back and keeping the tip sharp at all times. You don't ever want to press harder on the pencil at all while you're beginning or even <laughs> even really like now like even even when you've had a lot of experience you don't want to be pressing harder at all on the pencil eventually you learn when to press a little bit harder towards the last layers and sometimes to fill in some little holes but honestly don't do it at all if you're learning at any stage in the process because that's where I failed I, I would get impatient and press harder at the end because it was taking such a long time. When I say you're learning, this isn't me saying it as a bad thing. Everyone's still learning. Even I'm still learning. You'll never be at a point where you can't learn something. Literally on the piece before this, I was still learning this technique as well. I'm still learning it now. And it wasn't until I changed my technique slightly where I wasn't pressing hard at all. Um, where I produced the results that I, I wanted. I never had the patience and I would press hard on the tip right at the end and it would just ruin all the hard work that I'd done or I'd have to get through a commission quickly. I don't recommend rushing your art because honestly like this piece took me seven hours but even burnishing in the beginning would take me seven hours or two to three days as well even though burnishing is a lot quicker than this technique so it's a lot better than what I was doing and you can achieve this effect too just remember that patience is literally the key so light layers are the key as well never press harder on your pencil hold the pencil further back if you're having trouble with this it helps you not to apply too much pressure to the tip and don't draw with the stubs. <laughs> so if you have it, if you have to then get a pencil extender, I recommend Derwent, the black one. Um, you can also get cheaper ones, but I found with some of them, like the pencil was turning around inside the extender, which made it harder to sharpen them, um, which you won't have trouble if you get yourself a good sharpener as well. I recommend the Helix Desk Sharpener. It's literally a lifesaver. Otherwise you'll be sharpening and sharpening and sharpening away your entire pencil with Prismacolor pencils. That's all I really have time for today, so let me know what method you use for blending your pencils in the comments below and how you find it works for you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoy my content because it really helps me out and helps me rank higher on the YouTube. I love 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 you guys and I'll see you next time on Little Candy Gamer.